Round three, and we got ourselves a keep here. A bit of an awkward one because we're not doing anything early, but yeah, I think we got to keep hands like this. Both colors, relevant spells, Nefcrop and Tangler off the top, bringing it all together here. What do we got? Green, white, beats. Yeah, green, white, beats is good too. Let's get the Entangler out. Once again, the question, as per usual, what are we ditching to Miasmic Mummy? I don't want to ditch this. I don't want to ditch land. I don't want to ditch any of this. What the? Junk? Ooh, that's very harsh. Opponents living in Value Town, huh? All right, that's fine. Kill our thing, lifelink us, keep your dude, buff him. All right, Mr. Harsh, Mr. Harshity here. Let's kill your harsh dude. All right. Still no idea what I'm ditching to the mummy. Ah. So there's a fatty deck. I see. Well, that was a good draw for a fatty deck. Uh, I guess that we're just going to play an initiate and then not play the mummy because I don't want to discard any of those. Makes sense. If they play a huge fatty, as long as it's not a scaled behemoth. Uh-oh. Did I just jinx it by saying scaled behemoth? We'll find out. Oh, wow. It's a lot of gifts of paradise. I wonder what they need all those gifts of paradise for. Quite frankly. What do we got? What do we got? What are you doing? What are you doing? Bone picker, huh? All right, well, I can kill that. But I think the plan is play that True Heart Twins. That's what we want. One card left in my opponent's hands. Good. Let's play this dude. And then Passerino. Well, my opponent deems that worthy of killing, so, all right. Festering mummy. I guess I could ditch that to the miasmic mummy. But that's probably not even worth it, honestly. Let's just kill this thing. Get in there. Probably just play the festering mummy, I suppose. We'll get to the point where we play everything and then just play the Miasmic Mummy. I guess I could have played the Mummy there and made them ditch their last card, but if it was a fatty, they would have just played it. All right, they have two lands in hand. Otherwise, I have no idea why they would just chill there. So let's get in, and now I guess we can ditch a land to the Miasmic Mummy, which is fine. We got some beating to do here. Yep, don't need that anymore. What do we got? Land? It's got to be land. There's no way they have, yeah. All right. Opponent's deck is crazy. Just five color weird cards. Exemplar, all right. Another mummy. I don't really want to cast a never return on an exemplar of strength. Kind of don't. But at the same time, maybe I'm supposed to. Kill it. Get in for five. Follow up. I mean, I'm going to get in for five anyway, I guess. All right, let's just get in there. I mean, they're not blocking. They're not blocking, but we'll do it anyway. I mean, I, I should save this for something more substantive, substan substantial, whatever. Let's just get him for four, keep the mummy back. It can block the exemplar, deal the damage to it, and still kill it. Oh, 
Well, that's actually fine, too. I still feel like we're potentially getting good use out of this Never Return. As long as it's not like a scaled behemoth or something. Alright, now I get to play the mummy. Wait a second, wait a second. What? Why would you not cast impeccable timing? That was, that's odd actually, that my opponent would, I don't know, not play impeccable timing. I guess we can hold the mountain in case I draw another Miasmic Mummy. I do have two more in here, after all. How is my opponent not doing anything? That's just crazy to me. I mean, we're, we're beaten down with one ones here. We're Mons Goblin Raidering him right now. Just lands. Wow. I've been there. I have been there. It's not a pretty sight. Alright. So, opponent just drew a ridiculously high quantity of lands and then lost. So, they're playing a million colors with just seemingly. They're, they're all good cards. Every single card in their graveyard is good. The worst card in their deck is so far is, well, I guess it's Gift of Paradise, but um, when you're playing four, five color, whatever our opponent craziness, well, you see white, green, black, red. So, yeah, four color at least. They're playing everything but blue. And maybe they're even playing blue too. Who knows? All right. Interesting. Um, running it back. Yep. Um, I can actually keep this hand. It's not great, but this is where Fetid Pools actually looks decent, since we can cycle it. Yeah, so we're going to end up cycling the Fetid Pools at some point, and we're going to ditch a Mountain to a Miasmic Mummy. I would think Mummy's a little bit more harsh against my opponent, because they have a lot of fatties, so they both need their, they need their lands and their fatties. But yes, this is a good example of where Fetid Pools is actually a pretty reasonable card. Or why it's a good idea, even in aggro decks, to play the cycle rare lands. Because sometimes you just need to cycle. You need to dig. Stamina with Mummy is a bit, uh, a bit sketchy. A little bit dangerous. No Gift of Paradise from our opponent. Okay. So, why don't we cycle now, keep up stamina. Ooh, good old 1-1. One, one. All right, we'll electrify that dude. Uh, I mean, I can just do stamina instead. That actually probably makes more sense. So we'll do this. We're going to discard a land. And then they have to discard something too, so it's not bad. Guess we don't need any more of those. And I didn't attack with the mummy because... I don't know, I guess I could have. They discard a land. What do we got? 
Colossipede. Well, I can't electrify that, so I guess we're going to two-for-one ourselves here. Although, no, I guess at this point I can just curse Minotaur and pass. Because that way I can block with the mummy and then... All right. Oh boy. That's going to make things difficult, huh? Uh, I guess we can attack for two and then electrify. If they don't block, it's fine too, actually. I just play the twins. They do, in fact, block. Alright, so do that and then electrify. Get rid of the big dude. Probably a good idea to get rid of that since we know they're running the cartouche of ambition. Alright, that's actually pretty reasonable. Fling is not bad either. So let's get in and then we'll play the twins. No attacks. All right. Mummy, let's, uh, I guess, get in. I could have played the mummy, but the problem with that is... Yeah. All right. Yeah, I guess we're hanging out. I don't really want to play Miasmic Mummy and throw away Fling right now. I'm not in love with that idea. Well, they've got that pyramid online. What do we got? What do we have? Deem worthy. So I could fling it at my opponent's face. Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Four damage for two mana is pretty good. Oh, it's going to be a tough one. So I guess we got to chill. Oh boy. Yeah. Punish the strong straight fire now. Straight fire. Yeah, I can't beat that. Come surprisingly close, but no, I cannot beat that. Regal Caracol into Sandworm Convergence is so good. That's so broken good. Yeah, opponent's just going off here. But considering how ridiculously poor they drew in that last game, I guess it makes sense. Had to make up for it. Because they drew straight garbage in that last game, but they ripped hard this game. Holy crap, did they rip hard. Why would you do that one? Um, 
Yeah, that's insane. I don't know how I could possibly win here. So, <laughs> kill that guy, and then attack with a bunch of dudes that can't get in anyway. We're so dead. Why am I still playing? I don't know. Those are good questions. I don't have answers for them. There is no way to win. <laughs> Literal impossibility of winning. Like, I have no idea. There is no way to win here. But our deck should beat Sandroom Convergence probably like 95% of the time, I would think. It should be almost every time, strictly, like, almost every time. I really can't imagine losing to Sandroom Convergence very often. It's an 8-mana spell. Like, our deck is so well-geared to beat our opponent's deck that we really should not lose. Our opponent does have good cards, though. I mean, Regal Caracol is a good way to come back in the game, and then they have the black and the green cartouche, so it's not that they don't have good things. It's that, jeez. Uh, My opponent has ripped fire for the last four turns. It's been just Regal, Convergence, Great Maw, Bone Picker, Cartouche. <laughs> it's been like, wait, is that five turns of good rips? One, two, three, four, f five turns of good rips. Oh, jeez. All right. Why are we still playing? I don't know. I don't know why we're still playing. I guess to get information. But yeah, we really aren't supposed to lose to decks that run Pyramid of the Pantheon or Gift of Paradise or Sandworm Convergence. We are definitely supposed to beat this. Definitely. So I guess I got to keep the bat back to beat the Bone Picker. I guess the issue is maybe I should have attacked because my only way of winning is via... Wait, I can't even attack. <laughs> I can't even attack with my flyer. I really have no idea why I'm still playing this. I, I do not have a good answer. Trial of Zeal. Guess we'll kill the Regal Caracol. So the guys aren't buffed. I don't know. Not that good either. I mean, we're behind on the clock, too. I really should just concede, but maybe I just can get a little more information. Let's go to game three. Yeah, this should be an easy win, but will it be? That is the question. It should definitely be an easy win. Our, our opponent's playing... We're playing two-color aggro, and our opponent's playing four-color sandworm convergence. Yeah, we are supposed to win this match probably 90% of the time. I would think we would win. I would be surprised if we lost more than 10% of the games. But... You just never know. Magic is a fickle game. All right, we want to play first. <clears throat> yep, it's a keep. Put up malls to five. Wow, Miasmic Mummy might be the first play, and we might just ditch. Fling. I don't know. I just feel like it's way more harsh making our... Could ditch a land, too. 
I guess we don't have to ditch anything just yet. If we draw another land, I can ditch land. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We definitely want to play back-to-back -back mummy. Or do we? Or do we? Um... Well, we got to get the bodies out there, so it just makes sense. We'll ditch the land. Oh, boy. That's not what I was expecting. That's not what I wanted to see. Um, ditch a land again, or ditch a fling? Well, to be honest, I kind of don't want to ditch the fling. So let's ditch the land, I guess, but then I can't play Electrify. No, we still, okay. Ditch the land. I feel like Fling can still do some things. All right, well, I guess we don't have to worry about Sandworm Convergence. So now we probably have to worry about like impeccable timing or something. Entangler's a good draw. Let's get in there. Alright. So opponent's dead to fling. So, we ended up winning Black Red Aggro. And uh, even with the massive punt in <laughs> match one, game one. Low curve gets there, yeah. This format is, yeah, becoming a little bit predictable, isn't it? Low curve wins. That is just how it goes. But if you know it, then... I imagine you have success in this format, but if you don't know it, I would start doing it. I re highly recommend low-curve aggressive decks. All right, we'll see you for the next draft. Thanks, folks.